Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about interviews. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Hi Frederick, why is it that so many senior developers hate coding interviews? And what is what would be uh, the alternative that you would like to propose which will replace the current interview process? Well, um, so Usually the reason why senior developers hate the coding interview is because it's uh, it's basically homework. Uh, most companies, well, either they give you something very challenging to work on or like a class, like I've been, guys I've gotten code tested, it will take a fucking week. It literally will take a week to do it well. Uh, and uh, no one wants to, and it's basically just unpaid stress. At least for me, it is. Uh, I like to say that to the guys and girls that I interview uh, for the company I was working for, uh, um, because I know that they're nervous, and they sometimes they say, "Oh, I'm sorry, I'm very nervous." And I try to as I try to put on the biggest smile I have and be super warm and super welcoming and so forth, uh, uh, and tell them that you don't have to worry. I was nervous as well. I've been working for a few years now and I was still as nervous as you were I promise you like I couldn't get all the answers right and I sent in my code test eight times I did because I was really really insecure about like the, the work and it's I still like you know that it's not bad it's just you know you get these gremlins in your head and so forth and so forth and so all of that is sort of yeah uh, Especially for the ones, you know, when you've been doing this for years and years and years, it starts getting a little bit tedious that you have to prove it over and over. You should, you have to, because it's, uh, as I like to say, the, the meaning of senior or the meaning of any of this stuff is very relative. I've, like, you guys have interviewed people who have been working for as many years as I have, but they're not going to be able to work in a specific company because they don't really have the same sort of experience because the... And the, the the differences that what you've been doing and like the differences in tooling and your t and like your skill levels and so forth, they are so wide. There's such a slope on all of this stuff, like our gaps, and peaks and uh, peaks and gaps and so forth, uh, that you have to do some type of evaluation. There is no way for you to just say, no, actually, we're just gonna cut it off. But if you've been working for eight years, then you're good because I can promise you guys, you're not good just because you did it. You've done it for eight years. I've met plenty of software developers who are, they, I would not call them seniors, and not in the slightest, uh, at least not by the definitions used by the companies that I've ever worked for. So what do you do? Well, the thing that I usually tell people, uh, I haven't had a chance, honestly, to, uh, I hope that I can get that chance at some point, but uh, I've been trying to sell this idea that the goal of any interview is to get an understanding of what level of a software developer are you dealing with because what you're trying to assert is where should I put the pay level and the responsibility level for this individual and those things that you usually that usually the way that I categorize and this is my personal categorization now guys this is just my own value system is junior mid level and senior these are the three levels if you are a junior level, that means that you need assistance from someone with more experience. In other words, you are very unlikely to be able to work completely autonomously and just produce value if left alone. You're probably going to need pair programming, sessions, someone to mentor you, etc. etc. You are a little bit of an investment. Then you have mid-levels, and mid-levels don't necessarily have to know everything about, you know, all the tools and have like a really deep understanding of everything and so forth. But they need to know enough about the tooling and the ways of working so that you can give them a task and not have to check in on them every five minutes to see if they made any progress. They will finish the task within reason, of course, without taking away too much time from someone who is someone else or like a senior or something like that they can basically work at uh, work independently if needed because that's at the end of the day what you're going for you're trying to offload work to an individual and if that individual can't do that it's very difficult to keep them around because they're they're adding work there are of course nuances and so forth but that's the general 
general thing. And then of course the last thing is a senior, and a senior should be a, an individual who basically you can give the responsibility of just making sure that the entire team works. They are the people who are experienced enough that they know how to set up the work processes, they know how to coach the rest of the team if they need coaching, they know how to figure out if something tricky happens, like there's a latency issue or there's a bug in production or so forth and so forth. They have all the experience necessary to basically run the team if necessary and if you have such an individual you know that the products are is in good hands, you're going to get a decent level of quality, you're going to get decent level of results from and so forth and so forth. These are usually the levels and the thing about that which is very interesting is that you don't really need a very extreme coding challenge to figure this stuff out. So what I usually propose to people is that the coding test bit it should be there, but the goal is not to create something where you're trying to figure out is this a senior, is it a junior, is it whatever. Like you're trying to figure out can this person code well enough that it's worth my time to do an interview with them. Because it is in the interview when you talk to people where you actually figure out whether they're good or bad in terms of knowledge at the very, way, all the time, uh, at the very least. So you want a sample size of code that is just large enough so that you can figure out if this person even knows the basics. A classic one is that you give, if you take a front-end for like a developer example, for example, instead of creating a sophisticated super algorithm or something like that, create a simple application challenge where they have to make a mobile first uh, something uh, in, in a web page. It doesn't take more than say an hour or two at most and see if they can produce it. You will be surprised guys at how often I just give people uh, where I check code tests where like they can't actually do that they can't produce a mobile first application, then that's not an interesting person for me to talk to at all because they, they literally that is below a junior level software developer uh, in terms of at least what the current company that I work for has needs for. And so once you have that small challenge, it doesn't, as I said, have to be very complicated. It just has to assert that this person knows the basics of software development. Then you can take them to the interview and then you ask them about their experiences. This is what I do now, for example, where my job, one of my responsibilities is, it is literally to sit in interviews and ask people all kinds of different questions related to tooling, to practices and things like that. We don't go like graph searching algorithms or Fibonacci algorithms or things like that uh, usually with these people. We just try to figure out where is your experience level and you can hear that as I've said this many times before guys. If you listen to me talk about my experiences with software development, I hope now that you will hear a difference in the way that I speak from say someone who is you know just starting out if you ask me about oh, like how do I think about unit testing versus say you're like a college graduate or something like that you're going to hear or the answer differs in depth and sort of um, understanding let's call it that right it's the same thing when you interview people and by doing this you basically reduce down the amount of upfront investment for the for the seniors because the thing is I can't just take the interview immediately with everybody because basically that means that I have to interview everybody uh, that that takes a lot of time the interview itself so if you can uh, just give someone a very simple coding challenge get them to the interview stage then you can assert if it's worth continuing or not if you want to you can stop there because if you have a really good someone who can evaluate effectively you don't really have to go further than that because the reality is as I've said to many companies you should never make a big investment on a software developer until you've seen them work for at least around six months or something like that, like the, tri the grace period as we call it here in Scandinavia. Uh, the reason being because even if they know everything, it doesn't necessarily mean that they are productive when they get into the work environment. Guys, I've interviewed many, of pe many developers who are like, they know all the frameworks, they know all the practices, they know all the terms, they sound really smart and really good and so forth, but then they start working and it turns out that they can't work in the code base, they can't do anything without a lot of assistance or uh, they can't act, like they take like five times as long as everybody else to figure even the basic stuff out they don't really have the knack for it if that makes sense when it comes to actually delivering and so that's why I tell people you can have an optional last thing which is to give them a more like 
in-depth challenge that actually reflects the sort of work they're going to do in the... I've made videos about that as well, which is like a coding challenge where they actually get to code a small application using the exact same tools ideally as they're going to use in the role, and then you can walk through with them or you can do pair programming with them on this session if you want to, to just see how do they work, like well, how do they think uh, when they're on uh, on the job. Sometimes I don't like to suggest pair programming because it's, you know, it's people are nervous and take a home challenges can be easier and so forth. I leave that unsaid because there are pros and cons with each of them, but at the very least this is a core thing that I would change with the approach we have today. So what I want you to take away from this is that most seniors feel that they're getting homework or like they don't want to spend extra time and coding just to prove that they can do a job. Usually they are more comfortable just getting to the interview as quickly as possible. So I tell some companies if you have someone who really knows their stuff you can skip the code test. Uh, you don't have to put it first. You can just do the interview because usually you can tell if somebody's worth your time if, they're, if you're looking for seniors by just talking to them. Uh, but then you also require someone who really knows their stuff to do the interview because otherwise you're not going to you're not going to get much from it. Another approach which I think is a little bit nicer is, uh, which is my personal one, which is to have a very small code challenge, something that is not all that sophisticated, that they can do, they can take home. Uh, it's a, it basically just, it, this is there to assert, you know how to produce software at, uh, at at least a junior level, because that's just the thing that is beautiful about that. A junior, as just with the experience, a junior will just barely pass and make the thing that ne is needed. The more advanced software developers might add more things to the solution that sort of gives you an indicator that, yeah, actually, this person was thinking about testing, this person was thinking about this and that and so forth. So, the, you know, it's like getting, you know, you get a passing grade versus an A plus grade, but the challenge is still very small, very simple so that the investment up front for so a new candidate is very low because the thing is you want them to apply you want them to be hired but you need to assert that they're good enough and so the goal is not to give them a lot of a lot of work to prove that they should even get to the interview it's about getting enough sample of code so you can tell yeah this is worth an interview yes or no that's what you're going for and then figure out their experience level once you're actually talking to them. Have a great day.